What is up guys? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Day, but you might know me as Day Cyberwalks. I'm a cybersecurity professional and college student. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at TCP and UDP as part of our Wireshark series for security analysis. I believe understanding these two protocols is very important and is the foundation for understanding other protocols, ports, and services that are important in our work as cybersecurity professionals. With that said, let's dive right into today's video. Please be sure to like the video and subscribe if you've not. And thank you to everyone who is already subscribed. I truly, truly appreciate you all. Now, what is TCP? TCP is short for Transmission Control Protocol and is essentially used to provide end-to-end -end reliability for delivery of data or uh, delivery of uh, different packets in the network. Now, TCP is connection oriented. Um, this is a key thing that you have to remember um, as we're also gonna be talking about UDP, which is a connectionless uh, protocol. Now, TCP essentially keeps track of what is sent and received and ensures that the last bit of information was received before it continues the transmission. And essentially, if you want a more reliable transmission or flow of data, you most likely want to use TCP rather than UDP. Um, like I said, we will cover UDP in another video. Um, also, TCP operates at the OSI layer 4. So if you're familiar with the OSI uh, layer model, um, TCP operates as uh, OSI layer 4. And TCP handles sequencing and um, error recovery. And ultimately, the purpose of TCP is to ensure that data gets to where it's supposed to go. Now, uh, specifically for Wireshark, we're going to be looking at a TCP um, handshake. Um, and to explain what a TCP handshake is, uh, simply host A wants to send a TCP packet to host B. So host A initiates a connection with host B using a SYN flag, which we'll be looking at um, in this video. And then host B replies back to host A with a SYN ACK flag. And then host A replies back to host B with an ACK flag. So that's like what the TCP handshake looks like. So host A with a SYN flag to host B and host host B with a SYN ACK packet back to host A and then host A re uh, replies back to host B with an ACK um, packet and then they can start the transmission. Now, let's look at uh, how that works in Wireshark. And we're gonna be specifically using um, a packet capture from Chris, Han Chris Sanders uh, GitHub um, where he has uh, multiple packet captures and we're specifically gonna be using this uh, TCP handshake uh, packet so let's download that that should only take a second and then download all right open with wireshark oh, awesome okay so before i go into this packet capture um if you are not familiar with who chris sanders is he is a cybersecurity professional and author and a bunch of other things um he's also the author of um, this book uh, practical Packet analysis, I think that's the name. So I highly recommend that book if you're looking to learn more about Wireshark or networking. Um, it's really it's a really great book to introduce yourself to how Wireshark works and how all of these things tie together. Um, I highly recommend the book. Recently uh, finished reading the book and um, it's a really really great read if you're looking to learn about Wireshark and uh, networking, the basics of networking uh, in general. So highly recommend it. Uh, definitely check it out. Now let's go ahead and uh, analyze our TCP packet. So as you can see here, um, this three packets represent our TCP handshake. So uh, as, as you can see, it starts with a SYN, uh, SYN packet and then uh, a reply back with a SYN ACK and then finally an ACK packet, right? So let's look into uh, what the TCP packet holds. So let's look at the SYN and we'll open that down. And there's a lot of things that we can see in this TCP header is a lot of information. So we can see the source port, which is the port from you know the initial sender. So host A in this case, and then we have the destination port, which is the destination, which will be host B. And then we have the sequence number, uh, which is used to identify the TCP segment. And this essentially ensures that um, parts of the data stream is not uh, are not missing. So we already established that TCP is a connection oriented protocol and it has to make sure that all of the information is sent before it starts trans trans uh, trans transmitting more information. So this sequence number ensures that um, that, uh, that parts of data are not missing. And then uh, we also have a acknowledgement number. So this um, acknowledgement number is expected in a part in the packet. So uh, the other device expects this number um, when it's looking at the packet. And then we have the flag, which is really, really important. There are several uh, TCP flags, but the main ones for the TCP handshake are the SYN, SYN, uh, SYN ACK, and ACK. But there are several other uh, uh, TCP flags that are used for different things. Um, and we'll be looking more at these flags when we look at how, how scanning works in, in Wireshark. So other flags are on the URG um, 
uh, flag. There's um, the the push flag, uh, PS PSH. There's a reset flag, which is um, RSD, which we'll also be looking at when we look at um, the TCP teardown uh, 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 TCP teardown sequence. So uh, that's uh, you know really a really important aspect of the TCP header, the flag. So keep that in mind. Um, we also have the window size. So the window size is essentially the size of the TCP uh, receiver uh, buffer in bytes. So this uh, number is in bytes. Um, and we can also, you can use this window size for a couple of things. Um, window size can be used to uh, identify like um, operating systems uh, or identify maybe um, scanning engines and different things like that. So this is also a really important part of the TCP header. And then we have the checksum. So the checksum essentially ensures that the contents of the TCP header and the data are intact at point of arrival. So uh, like we already established, TCP is a connection oriented protocol. So it, it has multiple things in place to ensure that uh, data is successfully transmitted. So this checksum is part of those things. Now, uh, this uh, origin pointer is uh, if the URG flag is set, uh, like I mentioned, it's uh, one of the flags that you can possibly see in the TCP header. Uh, if the URG flag is set, this field is examined for additional instructions uh, for where the CPU should uh, begin reading, reading the data within the packet. So that's kind of um, what this uh, origin pointer is used for. And then we have the options, and these options are just like various optional fields that uh, can be specified in the TCP packet. So those are the main components of the TCP header, um, and we can see how the, uh, the TCP handshake works. So it starts with a send to the destination. So host A is 172.16 to the 16, the 128, and host B is 212.58.226.142. The 20, the so host A sends a sin packet to host B and host B replies back with a SYNAC and then uh, host A replies back uh, to host B with a ACK packet. And then after these, this handshake as completed, then the actual transmission can start and you know, the host A can start sending information to host B. Now that is the TCP three-way handshake. This is a really, really important thing to know because it's uh, something that you need to understand in you know, different uh in different aspects of security, apart from just um, analyzing packet captures, there's also a question that comes up a lot in cybersecurity interview, uh, if you're interviewed for cybersecurity uh, positions. So definitely keep that in mind. So that is the th TCP three-way handshake. And there's another thing, which is a TCP teardown, which I don't see being talked about a lot um, for some reason. So it, it's kind of the reverse of the TCP um, uh, handshake because it's like when uh, the transmission is about to end. So let's kind of look at how the TCP teardown works. And once again, we'll be using the packet capture from uh, Chris Sanders GitHub, and we'll be looking at TCP teardown, this one, and download, open with Wireshark. Awesome, so TCP teardown is essentially, like I said, the reverse of the TCP uh, three-way handshake. So the three-way handshake is usually when uh, host a wants to initiate a connection to host b and the teardown is when the connection is about to end so uh so when the teardown is about to happen um host a sends a fin ack packet to host b to end the connection so that's like the first communication saying oh it's time to end this connection and then host b re replies back to host a with two packets so the first packet is an ack packet right to acknowledge that okay I am I'm happy to end this connection and then a finag packet after that so it's two communications uh two packets from host b back to uh host a and then finally um host a replies back to um host b with a uh, ack packet so it, the the commonality between uh the three way handshake and the teardown is it usually ends with an uh ack package or the the ack stands for uh, acknowledgement or acknowledge so that's like the commonality between the three-way handshake and the teardown. So starts with a, a finac um, for the teardown and a, a sin for the three-way. And then in the middle, we have the ack and finac for the teardown. So two packets for the teardown. But for the three-way, it's one packet with uh, only a sin ack. Um, and then finally, both the three-way and the teardown end with an ack packet. All right, so that's how the, t uh, the TCP teardown works. And once again, the TCP teardown is used to end a connection. Now, another um, a TCP flag that is also um, important is the reset flag, or you would normally see that as uh, RST in place of, um, rather than ACK or FINAC, you would see an RST, and it's used to indicate that a connection was abruptly closed or, um, uh, or there was a refusal to the connection. So 
keep in mind when you see an RSD uh, uh, a packet uh, in t uh, for HTTP protocol, you, you, it's uh, uh, it's it used to indicate that the connection was abruptly closed or um, the destination host refused the connection attempt. So a little bit more about TCP. Uh, there are 65,535 ports available for TCP. And um, the first 1024 are the standard ports. Uh, so the first 1024 are the standard ports. And um, zero is actually reserved. So I guess from one to 1023 are the standard ports. So, you know, your regular ports that you normally use. So uh, DNS 53, HTTP 80, HTTP S 443, FTP 21, SSH 22, pub 3110, um, pub 3 over SSL 995, IMAP 143, IMAP over SSL 993. Uh, so those, those are, you know, your standard regular ports that you normally see in normal communication. And we have some that deviate from that, like RDP, which is on um, 3389. And then um, we have the ephemeral ports, uh, which are from 1024, through 6535 uh, so in all we have 6535 and the first the first 1024 are just 10 ports and then from 1024 down to the last 6535 35 are called ephemeral ports and um these um uh these uh these these are essentially used because um during a, a transmission only one service can communicate on a port at a given time so if we have let's say um host a communicating with a host B over a particular port. It can only uh, communicate at, uh, on one port at a given time. So the, the operating system or you know the host selects a port at random out of these, uh, one of these ephemeral ports between 1024 and 6535 to make the communication uh, unique so that we're not using uh, the exact same port for you know, the given communication. So the ephemeral ports are that many so that you know the host can uh, essentially pick any of those ports at random for the, the, the transmission that it's, 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 it's working on at that, at that point in time. So we've kind of covered uh, the main uh, things required for TCP communication. Um, once again, to reiterate, the basics of TCP is it's essentially used for uh, reliability. It's connection orient oriented. So it, it has different things in place in its header to ensure that um, data is transmitted successfully. Now let's look at UDP. What is UDP? UDP stands for User Datagram Protocol, and it's uh, aimed specifically at speedy transmissions. And um, one of the major uses of, of UDP uh, protocol is uh, for streaming audio or streaming video, because uh, we can we can deal with losing a little bit of data and maybe some drop packets here and there, and maybe during the transmission we could deal with maybe a little bit of uh, latency. But the what we have to keep in place is the fact that the stream has to continue. So UDP best serves that. Purpose. So UDP is a best effort or connection connectionless protocol because it does not formally estab establish or terminate connections like TCP. We when we looked we looked at TCP we saw that there were different measures in place to ensure that there was a there was a there was an est established establishment of communication before packets could start transmitting. But UDP doesn't uh, do that. It's not reliable, um, but it's 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 best effort. So it does its best to ensure a protocol, but it wouldn't go as far as TCP to put all of these different measures in place to ensure that you know there's communication so it basically doesn't care so any application that uses udp has to take special steps to ensure that data is reliably transmitted um in when there's a need for a transmission so um let's quickly look at what a udp header looks like once again we're going to be using the packet from quiz sanders uh website and we'll be looking at UDP. So let's look at this UDP DNS request. Um, and if you didn't know, now you know that uh, DNS works uh, using the UDP protocol. So UDP protocol is not as complicated as um, uh, the TCP protocol because it doesn't have all of these measures in place to ensure a successful delivery or successful communication. So we can see here the UDP header is very sparse. So just just enough information for the packet to go from point A to point B or from point B to point A. And you can see here, there is no, there are no flags, there is no uh, sin, there is no act, there is no uh, reset, none of that. There's just 
enough to get the information from point A to point B. That's all it needs to do. So let's quickly look at what we have in the TCP in the UDP header. So UDP, uh, we have the source port, which is the port from the original sender, um, which was used to transmit the packet, and then we have the destination port, which is the the the, the port towards um, the destination host to which the packet was transmitted transmitted to, and then we have the packet length, which is the length of the packet in bytes in bytes, and then finally we have the checksum, which is used to ensure that the contents of the UDP header is intact uh, upon arrival. We also saw that in uh, TCP, there was a checksum for this uh, the same exact reason. So what, like we, we've seen here, the UDP header pretty sp uh, sparse because of the way UDP works. And kind of to kind of uh, cover all of that once again, UDP is aimed at speedy transmission. So it basically doesn't care um, and it's best effort. So it does its best to send information from point A to point B. It doesn't you know make the effort to formally established communication which is the key difference between it and tcp which makes all of these efforts to ensure that there is an established communication an established transmission before it stands starts sending the packets uh, needed for communication between host one and uh, host two and all of these are really really important because we're going to be looking at how scanning works in networks um with wireshark so understanding how all of these different protocols work um is going to be important in analyzing uh, uh scanning packets because we can see the difference between uh, maybe a tcp scan or a tcp send scan um uh, maybe a udp scan as well so um this is really important information so keep all of this in mind so um with that said that's so that's the end of today's video. I hope you um, enjoyed this video. I hope you understand the differences between TCP and UDP. Um, I hope you're also able to use this in other things like maybe interview situations when you're where you're asked to uh, explain TCP or explain UDP or explain the difference between TCP and UDP. So with that said, that's the end of today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Um, and please be sure to like the video and subscribe if you're not subscribed. Also check out Chris Sanders' uh, GitHub and also check out his book. I'll leave a link to these things in the description as well so that you can check those uh, resources I mentioned out. Um, also be sure to subscribe to my personal YouTube channel uh, where I post tons of cybersecurity content that are really beneficial to cybersecurity professionals or cybersecurity students. And also be sure to check out our website, cyberwarsacademy.com where we have tons of resources to help you in cybersecurity entry-level career. And lastly, be sure to join our cybersecurity community. Um, we have a Discord server. Uh, where we have a community of people who are like-minded cybersecurity professionals, uh, students looking to connect um, and collaborate and just have a community of people who are like-minded and enjoy cybersecurity like you uh, and me. So please be sure to join. And once again, thank you very much for watching the video. Um, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.